Less than a month has passed since SpaceX's fifth impressive Starship flight, in which the company brought the booster back to the Texas launch pad using mechanical arms to catch it. Now, a new Starship flight could take off after only the next 10 days. You did not hear that wrong. The FAA and SpaceX themselves just declared this new launch date. This will be the fastest Starship spacecraft turnaround of SpaceX to date. Let's get into it more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Recently, the space community received exciting news when the FAA announced a no TAM for Starship Flight 6, issuing a warning about hazardous areas for the Starship test flight starting November 18th. Soon after, SpaceX's page confirmed the new launch schedule for Flight 6, saying Starship's fifth flight test was a seminal moment in iterating towards a fully and rapidly reusable launch system. Next up, the sixth flight test of Starship is targeted to launch as early as Monday, November 18th. This announcement was accompanied by an impressive video showcasing all the remarkable achievements of SpaceX teams in Flight 5. It's truly inspirational and feels almost unbelievable. Don't you feel the same? Comment yes if you share this feeling. After all, the video ends with an open invitation to the upcoming Flight 6 launch, hinting that even more exciting things are in store, and this time we don't have to wait as long as before. Many people may question the schedule, but given the company's track record, there's no reason to doubt SpaceX's rapid pace. The faster flight cadence is partly due to the previous successes, including the first return of Super Heavy Booster to the launch site, where the massive chopsticks extending from the launch tower caught at mid-air and a controlled, precise landing of Starship's upper stage in the Indian Ocean. Besides, the sixth test includes many of the same objectives, leading the FAA to approve both Flight 5 and 6 simultaneously last month. Until now, SpaceX has had to wait sometimes a month for approval for each Starship launch. So, what's different in Flight 6 compared to Starship Flight 5? There's a lot to look forward to. One thing that SpaceX has shifted for is Starship's launch time for this flight. While previous launches occurred in the morning at Starbase, this flight's scheduled for a 30-minute launch window starting at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Meaning that Starship will land in the Indian Ocean during daylight instead of nighttime as before. This adjustment allows all of SpaceX fans to get a clear view of Starship's precision vertical landing in the second stage. This enhanced visibility should provide a lot of data and a clear view of the event. Regarding technical and rocket hardware mission objectives, a post on the SpaceX website states that it will attempt to replicate previous successes November 18th, including catching the booster at the launch site and an accurate splashdown in the ocean. Although the success of the first catch attempt validated the design, providing valuable data to further refine hardware and software, an audio clip from SpaceX CEO Elon October 25th reveals SpaceX officials mentioned nearly aborting the previous Super Heavy catch due to a misconfigured parameter tied to one of the booster's Raptor engines. They noted that the catch attempt included a whole bunch of new aborts and commit criteria that hadn't been fully double-checked, but data from that flight has since been reviewed, allowing for necessary changes. Thus, Flight 6 is an excellent opportunity for SpaceX to perform this mission with greater reliability. Hardware upgrades for this flight add redundancy to the booster propulsion system, reinforce structural durability in key areas, and shorten the fuel drain time from the booster after a successful catch. Mission planners have also updated software controls and launch and return criteria for the booster. Similar to Flight 5, separate vehicle and launch pad criteria must be met before Super Heavy Booster returns for capture. This requires robust health checks on the booster and tower along with a final manual command from the mission flight director. If this command is not issued before booster back ignition or if automatic health checks show unacceptable conditions in Super Heavy or the tower, the booster will follow a trajectory for a controlled soft splash down in the Gulf of Mexico. SpaceX prioritizes safety for the public and their team, and the return will only proceed under suitable conditions. The returning booster will decelerate from supersonic speeds, creating a sonic boom audible in the vicinity of the landing area. Generally, the only impact for people nearby will be a brief noise like thunder, with variables like weather and distance affecting the intensity. Additionally, the Starship upper stage will follow a similar trajectory that it successfully followed in October. However, this time it will include an in-flight relight of one of the rocket's engines, an important capability to eventually be able to reuse the upper stage. So far, Starship's upper stage hasn't yet flown in orbit. Instead, it was lost in the first three flights before doing the controlled re-entry to the Indian Ocean on tests 4 and 5, including an early launch this month. The main reason Starship hasn't gotten into orbit yet and made multiple trips around the planet is that SpaceX and the FAA want to ensure it returns safely, splashing down in a remote part of the ocean. Starship's massive, and debris falling into an inhabited areas would definitely be a disaster. 
To achieve a controlled reentry, SpaceX must demonstrate the Raptor engine's capability to relight in space for an accurate deorbit burn. In Starship's third test flight in March, SpaceX initially planned to relight one or more Raptor engines in flight. But this effort got canceled due to a loss of vehicle control. In the last two test flights, SpaceX didn't test Raptor as the engines were focused on improving the second stage's reentry. However, SpaceX might try to ignite one or more Raptor engines during the sixth test flight or shortly after. Successful execution will enable the company to begin orbital missions with Starship and potentially pave the way for Starlink launches as early as the first half of next year. These would be larger Starlink satellites that only fit in Starship's large payload bay and would provide direct-to-mobile internet capability. SpaceX plans to test changes in the thermal protection system on Starship. The flight test will assess new secondary thermal protection materials and will have the entire sections of heat shield tiles removed on either side of the ship and locations being studied for catch-enabling hardware on future vehicles, the company stated. SpaceX plans to eventually recover Starship using the same launch tower catch technique used for Super Heavy Booster. Starship will also fly at a higher angle of attack during the final descent, purposefully stressing the limits of flap control to gain data on future landing profiles. Above is everything we're sure to see in Flight 6. Some may think Flight 6 is no longer crucial because it'll be the final flight of the Starship V1 version, but this flight plays an equally important role as ones before it. Starship is still a developing vehicle, and such test flights are essential to make it as safe as possible for the future. When Flight 6 does take off, it's going to bring about new improvements that SpaceX can incorporate into the V2 model, which already boasts very smart modifications. The new version of Starship promises substantial technical improvements. The forward fins are redesigned for aerodynamic optimization, while the bigger fuel tanks will expand the ship's range. Especially notable is the upgraded thermal protection system, including secondary heat shields, showing that SpaceX is seriously addressing one of the biggest challenges in spaceflight, and that's reentry temps. The almost monthly launch frequency of Starship in its second year of operation is not just a technical feat, but also an operational breakthrough, becoming particularly important as SpaceX develops an on-orbit refueling system, a key component for long-term missions. The ability to execute multiple launches in a short span will serve as a foundation for establishing an in-space fuel supply chain. Operationally, SpaceX has shown substantial autonomy in managing Starship flights. The company can set launch schedules based on internal system readiness, including hardware, software, and ground infrastructure, reflecting the maturity of the program and confidence regulatory bodies have in SpaceX's technical capabilities. Looking forward, Starship's development has the potential to reshape the whole space industry. With the ability to transport cargo and people at a much lower cost than previous vehicles, Starship could usher in a new era in space commercialization, not only serving scientific and exploratory missions, but also creating new economic opportunities in space tourism and resource extraction. The biggest challenge will likely be maintaining this development speed while ensuring absolute safety and reliability. SpaceX will need to continue refining reusable technology, optimizing operational processes, and developing infrastructure to support an increasingly high launch frequency. Simultaneously, the company must build and perfect the orbital refueling system, a critical element for future deep space missions. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.